I'm glad to see a few people are still here, which is good. Um, so we'll be talking about, uh, yeah, some of the things that Simon's already run through and how we can uh, help you uh, navigate um, through some of these big changes. Obviously, a lot of changes there. Um, so what we've tried to do as best as we can is package up these changes into easy systems that are documented in design guides and technical product statements. Um, and then, you know, takes a lot of the thinking um, out of the process. Um, so we'll look at uh, the non-combustible and facade um, solutions that we've, we've been working through and really, really good news there in the, the building code changes around sarking and gaskets, sealants, corkings, everything that we've, we've run through. Um, and we'll also have a look at um, some of the energy efficiency and occupiable outdoor areas um, changes as well. So this is a fairly typical apartment building, um, Clyde building. Uh, this is up in, um, in Sydney. And uh, this is the Exotech facade panel system. So it's a nine mil compressed fibre cement. Um, it's sealed on all six sides. Um, so it takes a good coat of paint. It has uh, really strong long-term durability. And it's also been used as a balcony and fill as well as a facade. Now, um, the, <laughs> originally the entire facade system was acceptable uh, and, and any compressed fibre cement facade system was acceptable until the VBA uh, notification came out stating that every element of the wall had to be non-combustible. Um, now that's been clarified and uh, as, we've, as we've said, our sarking, which we use as part of our system, and I don't know, oh, here we go, I've got a, an exploded axonometric here. Our sarking is now luckily able to be used because it's the, the, the sarking that we've tested the entire system with for condensation management, for water ingress, um, for uh, long-term durability, and also for some of the energy ratings you get from its reflectivity. Um, so it's now, um, it's now deemed um, non-combustible under C1.9e. It's got the flammability index of one out of 100, so it, doesn't, it, it can't contribute to flame spread and it's 0.2 mil thick. The other elements of our system um, are also deemed non-combustible in terms of the, uh, the actual uh, fibre cement facade panel, the compressed fibre cement, which is um, made in accordance with the Australian standard, uh, which was adopted by the government. So really good changes there. Um, I guess one area that I keep getting asked, and um, I'm sure you guys are asking the same questions, is about thermal breaks. Unfortunately, the building code still hasn't offered a, um, a way of uh, of certifying thermal breaks for use in a um, in a facade system. So, because it does offer two deemed to satisfy options, one being plastic, which obviously isn't non-combustible, and the other being timber, which also isn't deemed non-combustible. So, what we have been working through is some clever fixing techniques, which basically break the path of thermal conductivity through the wall. Uh, and my colleagues um, back in in Sydney and Kate um, here can definitely help you um, out with the, with any designs you're working on using Exotech that are required to have that thermal break. So it's a fully non-combustible solution. It just uses a different fixing method of the uh, of the top hats um, back to the frame to be able to break the path of conduct conductance through the wall. So it's not actually a passive fire resistance wall um, that would require additional layers added into this wall. This is just a non-contribution to facade fire. Um, and I take your point around the accreditation and we provide on-site training ourselves. So that's sort of something that we do by ourselves in terms of um, assisting installers and assisting our customers. Um, but we don't, as James Hardy, require any type of accreditation to install this. Um, there may be state regulations and local regulations that require additional training. Um, but in New South Wales, definitely um, any lining contractor who can install plasterboard um, is pretty much installing this, this type of material as well. And then we just come along to make sure that it's being installed correctly and that the QC um, is, is undertaken so that all the elements are in place. But it's a, very, it's, it's a very simple system at the end of the day. There's nothing really complex in it. Um, and it has been around for a, for a long time. But now the code gives you a really, really easy compliance pathway to be able to go through each layer. Um, and uh, in terms of the thermal, uh, it basically depends on the grade of, of um, insulation that you use um, more than anything else, which is the one part of the system that James Hardy doesn't provide. So that would be provided by a third party. This has been certified Yes. Yeah, so I'll take you through some of the testing that we've done. I think I've got a slide in here. Do I? I don't. I do in another presentation, unfortunately, but... Um, as, as all our, so we have an internal standard that we um, 
that our R&D facility follows in terms of its product development and, and improvement. So that's your weatherproofing test to the VM1 rig that we've got. All of the fibre cement tests, so heat, rain, um, durability, um, which is a long-term durability test. Um, all of the international fibre cement standards. Um, and then all of the systems testing that we get done external to, to James Hardy where we don't have the rigs. We normally uh, work with CSIRO and those, those sorts of testing labs. So on to, I guess, um, uh, the, some of the other key changes that we're trying to tackle at the moment um, are around um, energy efficiency and air tightness. We, at the moment, are reviewing all of our um, energy efficiency systems, um, air, tight, um, air tight systems, seals, other ways, looking at the blower door method, um, potentially using that to certify some more energy efficiency energy efficient building systems um yeah we're just we're just getting stuck right into it at the moment we don't have anything at the moment um that's going to be really really groundbreaking that i can introduce you guys today but watch this space because we're all over it um in terms of occupiable outdoor areas um i was st i stepped out of the room so i'm not sure if simon if you've no you haven't covered off okay Cool, so there is a new part in the building code about occupiable outdoor areas um, and ensuring that they are also fire safe. Um, so apart from our cladding products, we also do make a series of flooring and decking products as well. Um, all of them, all of our products are made out of fiber cement. So they're all non-combustible. They all achieve very low fire levels, um, very good fire performance. Um, and then in terms of the mid-rise timber, again, it um, provides you that fire protective covering. So that's all the things we're working on at the moment. Um, but while we're here, um, I did want to call out two key kind of watch outs again. Um, these are some things that my team has been dealing with over the last probably two years now um, in terms of some of the strange things that have been happening out there and uh, some of the questions that we've been getting asked. And one of them is um, watch out for fibre cement that's not fibre cement. Um, fibre cement is a, a material that has, you know, decades of, of, of testing behind it and decades of use. So it's proven, it's tested, it's understood. Um, and it was adopted by the Australian government in the, the early 2000s um, as a deemed to satisfy material for a whole range of things. So fire resistance, weatherproofing, structure, it's, 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 it's just one of the systems that you can rely on and you don't need to worry about, um, which means that it gets all those exemptions and, and doesn't require additional testing. So what we found is that a whole bunch of imported products that are not actually made of fibre like fiber cement, not the same material composition, are testing their products to some of the tests from the fibre cement standard and then stamping them and saying, here, this is fibre cement. And I don't know if you've come across them or heard of them, um, I'm not gonna name them, but just always ask for a standards mark certificate um, when you're looking at a product that you're thinking, oh, it's, it, 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 it says it's fibre cement, but it doesn't look like it, or, it, or it's from a company I've never heard of before, or something along those lines. Um, because what we have found is that these products really, some of them are, are probably fine, but the, some of them have been really, really bad performance. Um, and one example was um, a situation where, after just two years of this product being put on a three-storey building, um, you just reach behind the render that had been put over it, and the product was just mush, and it had corroded all the fasteners. Um, and it was a fibre cement product. Um, so just watch out for that. Please ask for test certificates, standards mark certificates, um, anything that can, can prove that it's been tested properly. Um, and I think we covered this, but our state regulations, um, we've already discussed it. Uh, you know, the, the, the states are the ones that make the law, the code is just the code. So um, in James Hardy, we are trying to get across every single different state regulation and we've got a database that we're building in terms of all of the differences um, in the states and we are working our way through the different processes and certification um, procedures uh, as well. Um, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of things and it's a moving, moving goalpost at the moment. Um, I don't honestly, unfortunately know that much about ACT's regulations, but it is on the list. Um, but for example, in Queensland, they keep backflipping on whether they're gonna adopt the bonded laminates clause or remove it entirely from the deemed to satisfy. I don't know where they stand today, um, but I'm sure we will find out by May 1st. Um, but what's important here is that, yeah, we have that database and it's available to, to you. Um, and it can be through our, our local rep with Kate. She'll put you in touch with our engineering solutions team. And if you do have any certification questions that are a bit curly, we, we will probably have the answer for you. Um, so this is just a little bit about what we, what we do. 
Um, so yeah, that same engineering solutions team, um, we can help you out with any sort of project specific detailing. If you guys send us your building plans, we'll help you out with um, making sure that any bespoke or custom solutions, um, we can design them for you and provide you with the evidence that you need to, to sign off on them. Um, we can provide engineering advice. Um, we provide compliance documentation for your certifier. So we, we deal with probably building surveys, probably 50% of our, our time um, of who, who we're dealing with, which is, which is great. So um, very, um, yeah, we're always happy to help. So please get in touch with us and please give us your, your, your um, crazy designs so that we can come up with some really cool solutions. Um, and the way that we do that is through our R&D facility. So we have 60 engineers, scientists, um, just industry experts in all kinds of fields. Um, we have a fully decked out lab um, downstairs uh, with all kinds of different testing facilities. We have the weather tightness test. Um, we have structural, huge me mechanical and structural labs. Um, but if we can't figure out a solution in our own labs, um, we have a really good um, network of experts. And Simon, yes, you're one of them. Um, so <laughs> that we can contact and, uh, and, and get the answer um, for, for you. Um, and we will, we will always come up with a solution. So please get in touch with us.